Okay, it looks like it's um, a minute after seven, so I think we'll get started here. Uh, welcome everyone. My name is Justine Becker. Um, I work for AAPT and I will be facilitating the webinar tonight. Um, I'm excited to have Tommy Holsenbeck with us today. Um, Tommy is here to talk about the high school physics contest, but uh, in her background, she has been a public, uh, has taught high school physics at a public school for um, 19 years in Alabama. And now for the last um, 12 years, I believe, she's working for Alabama, Alabama State University Science in Motion Specialist, um, where she facilitates the use of equipment throughout the state. Um, she knows uh, everything there is to know about the high school physics photo contest. She has been involved in the contest uh, since 2009 and been the coordinator, the leader since 2012. Um, to the attendees, uh, if um, for we are going to have a lot of time for questions. If you have questions, uh, at the bottom you should find a chat box. Um, and you can press chat and then you guys can en en enter your questions in there. Um, additionally, uh, Tommy, were you thinking that you might want some questions where uh, they actually speak? Either way. Okay. Um, additionally, if there uh, is some, um, if you'd like to ask your question uh, verbally, uh, you can raise a digital hand also on your screen. You should be see an option to raise a digital hand and I can, promote you so that we can actually hear you um, ask your question if you'd like to ask it verbally. But that will be at the end. I think Tommy has a little bit to uh, share with us before we have some questions. So I will hand it over to Tommy. Thanks for being here, Tommy. Well, I hope everybody likes the contest as much as I do and gets as excited about it as much as I do. Um, I've enjoyed it since I first joined AAPT and had all the posters up in my classroom and loved it when the kids asked things and did try a few entries, did never win anything. But um, I loved working with the lady that took over second. She wasn't the original person that started this, but under her guidance and help and everything, it really blossomed into, I receive about 750 to 800 photographs every year and with a group of physics teachers that are near by in the state of Alabama. Sometimes they come down from North Alabama or whatever and help select the top 100, a combination of both the contrived and the natural. There's a lot less competition in the natural. It's not nearly as exciting as some of the contrived ones are but they have some beautiful photos. I hope you've gotten your <clears throat> physics teacher for this month. And one of the photos that I really liked that didn't win anything is on the cover. So that's always fun. Um, I have a um, PowerPoint that the gentleman that helps me that is the webmaster at AAPT for when you enter everything and when we have problems and we have to do something. Terrence um, has fixed a PowerPoint for me because I really didn't want anybody looking at me. So um, we've got about 70 or so pictures, old ones and new ones that he picked out and I'm gonna run it while somebody's either verbally or typing questions or asking. So I'll start it now, hopefully. We'll see what happens. Let me, maybe if I need to start it first. And from the beginning, and then I want to share, and maybe that's going to run, Justine? <laughs> um, I can see your, uh, I can see the PowerPoint. I would guess. It's on a did, timer, so. So it should start. I'll yep. link through for you. Maybe I can start it. There we go. And I think Terrence just picked photos out, ones he liked, and not necessarily winners or anything like that. But who has a question? 
Okay, so you're looking for questions now. So um, if you have any questions to do with the high school physics photo contest, um, at the bottom or at the chat box, you can enter it in on the chat box or you could raise a digital hand and I will uh, allow you to um, speak verbally to, to answer your question. Maybe everybody knows what everything they want to know about the contest. This year there is something different. Um, all the pictures are going to AAPT. They used to all come to me and it takes quite a time to open everything and arrange them so they can be judged and get them in the database and everything. So that's going to help. And of course, in the last several years, there's been a $5 entry fee per picture, unless you're a member of AAPT, then the 15 maximum that come from any school, if you're a member of AAPT, then they can all enter without paying the $5. So another good reason to join AAPT. So I have a question. What What is the most intriguing photo that you think you've ever seen in your years working on the um, photo contest? I don't know. Each year there's kind of one that I pick out and really like. Um, with Terrence picking the photographs from years back as well as from current years, you can really see the change in the types of cameras people used. Um, Maybe in about 2012, there was one that was done with a real high-speed camera because you had to do it with a high-speed camera then where this kid was slapping the other kid's stomach and you see his handprint. Maybe people remember that one. I don't know if that's a picture that Terrence picked out or not because I haven't even looked at all the pictures he selected. But um, I don't know. There's always some fun ones and whoever wins usually wins by a large margin so these are physicists most of them and i am not a physicist that vote at the summer meeting they get to vote not in any order on their top five and there's that one the one i was talking about 2010 but you had to really have a high speed camera and now you can do so much with your phones. Um, I remember one year this girl took a picture, seems like up on a ski slope and a picture in somebody's goggles or something. And she said, and I was doing it with my iPhone. So, um, you know, you can take such marvelous pictures now. We always do get a lot of sunsets and sunrises and wine glasses and trying to think of other things, the ones with the sparklers in the darkness and things like that. And so to judge them, we kind of put all those in a stack and pick out the best one or ones of those to be entered in the top 100. I keep thinking there aren't too many other ways they can think up to do a photo, but they usually do. Mary Wynn, the lady that did it that I was her understudy, and I've known her for a long time. We did C3P at the University of Dallas together and everything, and she says the pictures keep getting good, better, not gooder, keep getting better. Well, that really means a lot to me because sometimes I feel like they look like the same thing every year, every year. Nobody has a question? This is going to be a short webinar. Um, one thing that you had shared with me um, earlier, and I've, and so one thing I've been doing with my classroom is every day as part of uh, my announcements at the beginning of the day, I've been sharing a, re a previous winner from- Oh, that's good. Yeah, from the High School Physics Photo Contest. Um, and I've been going back. The one I showed today was from 
2005, which I've realized my kids were babies when that, <laughs> because I teach ninth grade. But um, I'm you. You mentioned how you can really see the difference from uh, from winners in the past all the way up until because this has been going on for a lot how when did it first start Tommy uh I'd have to look back and see I can't I can I can look but when I do it'll mess up my screen so a long time right yes 2004 2002 I'd have to look and see there were very few entries when it first started and then it kept getting larger and kept getting larger and then Mary got it to around seven to eight hundred and even with the entry fee now for students who aren't, whose teachers aren't members of AAPT, we still get about that many. Wow. Um, how, how do you think, how would you say that uh, with the changes in technology um, of taking pictures, how the different pictures that you get as entries have changed? Well, especially the stop action ones. And I, you know, people didn't have digital cameras that much. Um, we only started the database and uploading the pictures about 2010, something like that. Um, and people asked, do I have to send in a copy of the picture? That's the only way we can judge them. There's no way we could judge them online. It's just not possible going back and forth and trying to pick them out and categorize them some way. It's just not possible. So we actually put our hands on every photograph and read every essay. And um, the importance of the essay, many students don't put much effort into it, I'm afraid. Um, I really like the ones, and I'm not the one necessarily that, you know, I read lots of essays and I have people that I can ask, is this physics right? And I do that often, but um, it's just interesting to see how easily now they can take a photo with a camera on their phone versus what they had to do before or before there were so many that were digital photographs and things. So it's really exciting in all kinds of, especially college and university professors talk about, they put their poster outside and how many people stop by and look at the photos. At my university, I've got them lying in the bulletin boards outside my office on the basement floor where we are and catch students looking at them a lot of times. So I hope everybody else enjoys the posters where the winners are. They're, um, the calendar is not all just the winners. It's the art department at AAPT kind of selects the ones that they want to do. Um, and then you have the ones that go on the covers a lot of times. One big mistake that maybe we've kind of rectified after the website and changing it a little the last time was to be sure that the student signed the release. I've had students that maybe would have, you know, would have definitely been in the top 100 and might have even placed or something, but they didn't sign the release and they've got to do that. So hopefully we've got that taken care of. A lot of teachers I hear from have made them contests at their school. I remember years, several years ago, and, and I was one of the last people to come to Facebook, but when Facebook was there, they put their 25, 30, whatever pictures they had entered from their students on the Facebook page, and then everybody could vote on what were the top ones for the school, and their top 15 were the ones that they entered. So it wasn't just what the teacher was doing. So it makes it more exciting and for the whole campus to see the whole high school to, you know, feel a part of it. Does anybody else have a favorite one that you've had from year before, years before? I like this one that's up there right now. And then I guess another one of my favorite is the syringes that are red and blue and combined to make purple. And you're, there it is. 
can't believe it was the next one that came up. It's one I really loved. So um, I see that several people have joined us in the last few minutes. Uh, just to update those of you who have joined recently. Um, right now, we are open for some questions. So if you have some questions, um, you could add them into the chat box. Um, or if you'd like to verb verbal verbally ask your questions, you could um, raise your digital hand and I can get you up so that we can hear you ask your questions about the high school physics photo contest. Tommy, what do you think is the most creative way that you've seen uh, a teacher use the high school physics photo class contest in their classroom? Well, I don't know about the most creative way, maybe the most successful way is That's assign it as a project. Um, I didn't assign it as a project. I did lots of projects, Rube Goldbergs and cardboard boat races and things like that. But I made it a, they had options and that was one of the options to get a grade but it wasn't as big as a project. But there are um, several rubrics that are published on irubric.com. I started one, I can't figure out how to get it published and maybe I will, to just do a search for AAPT on irubric.com. Several of them come up as to how teachers, what they're you know, requiring their students to do about their essay, about getting it in on time. Um, one teacher I know in Alabama requires every one of his physics students to enter some kind of a contest. And mine is a popular one to, to enter because it's fairly easy to do. Sometimes maybe uh, that doesn't get winners and things like that. I do think they've had a winner recently, but um, I don't know. There's, there's lots of ways. We have had some instances where there were some copied off the internet. Um, we try to search that out and find them if we can. And hopefully I've had some teachers that even have written me and said, you've got to disqualify this person. You know, this was his, um, this was not a photo that he took. He found it from another way or something like that. So making it, you know, a grade in your class. I personally like the essays that are more personal. You can tell when it's, you know, cut and pasted out of a textbook or out of Wikipedia or something else on the internet. And I like to hear the stories behind it. There are lots of physics professors at the AAPT summer meeting, which this summer will be in Washington, DC, and everybody should come that spend a long time and read every essay or more. I think they'll, they find their pictures that they like and then just read those essays. And like I said, they can vote for five contrived and five natural photos in any order. And then we tally those up. And that's how we get the winners. And the winners are usually way out ahead of anybody else, especially the first one. Um, so we do have a question in the chat box, Tommy. It says, ha "You have, do you have downloads available for guidelines, etc." Um, really, the guidelines are what's spelled out on the AAPT website. Um, mm -hmm. I, when I'm looking, when we're the the sort of rubric that we've got, and I have one that I've I've created. It's far from perfect, but um, Justine said there's a way I can share with everybody a site or somehow, and I'll do that afterwards. So it's the beginning of a rubric. It would be one that I surely wouldn't do a rubric on all 750 photos, but when we get down to the final ones and we're down to 52 and we've got to get to 50 in contrived or sometimes we kind of, there are lots more contrived than there are natural. So we have a hundred finalists it's not always broken down 50-50, but really close. And um, so that's something we look at, bringing an art teacher 
like I said, physics teachers that I know and work with and live close. One that's worked with me a lot that lives in Op, Alabama, that comes up special to do it. So, I, is that the guidelines you meant? Um, I also, I added the website, the link for the high school physics photo contest on the AAPT website. So, so it tells um, what size it has to be and... Yes, it has all of those guidelines. And it's it got to be uploaded and... And it has many, many um, examples uh, of previous ones. There. That's where I've been getting all the previous ones for my classroom. Yes, that's what you're showing. And sometimes we do get a few copycats, but... How do you I'm handle copycats? I try to remember what's been before, but not always. How do you handle copied pictures when you do get them? They're disqualified. Just, to, okay. Yeah, we can search on um, Google pretty much and there's another website. I have several people that are on my advisory committee that one from the high school committee of AAPT, one from the um, ed tech, educational technology committee that helps me, one from the large database, the compadre, he does that one and they help me see what's going on and hopefully, like I said, we eliminate all the ones that are just copies off the internet. I can Google them just like you Google your kids term paper that they found on some website. website. Sorry, I don't have background music. But it's better than looking at me. Oh, I love this one. How about um, prizes as far as? Well, th there are winners. It's um, some money that's donated by Vernier and the teacher also gets a um, gift certificate from Vernier to buy some of their wonderful probes and equipment and software and everything that they have, but it's not some huge amount. So I'm, I'm kind of, I, I did a local contest in Alabama where we were getting students to do a commercial for the physics students to convince their peers and the people to come after them to take physics. And I had a thousand dollar prize and I thought I was going to get lots of entries and I didn't, but there's a lot of, I guess, history behind it. Some students have wanted information so they could put it on their resumes. And unfortunately, the winners don't come out until it'll be July when we have the AAPT meeting. So sometimes they can't, you know, include that when they're trying to get their college acceptance. But Physics is everywhere. We want them to see that. Some of these like this, you'll have to read what that really is. Um, what do you think is the most common phenomena that you, uh, that you get in the photos? A lot of people do the balloon and a stream of water for electrostatics. Of course, like I said, there's always rainbows and sunrises and sunsets, but the natural one is kind of the hardest to imagine. We have gotten some, some different ones. There's always, like this one, a lot of CDs with reflections and drops of water and things on that. So, but everything has not been done yet. How much do you think, uh, or how much does the essay um, count towards their selection into the top 
100. <clears throat> well, it is a photo contest. So that's kind of the main criteria. Uh, but it does have to be an essay explaining what's going on. Hopefully it's got the correct physics. Um, sometimes we have, after the winners, we have a physicist that, and they do this at AAPT, not me, I did once, but that didn't work too good, edit and make sure that the physics is correct because we don't want to publish something where the physics isn't correct. Um, like I said, when they're voted on at the meeting, these physicists spend a long time reading the essays of the ones they like. And I've got, like I say, a number of high school physics teachers. I don't have any, can't convince, convince the folks at my university necessarily to help me pick them out and read them all. But it is an essay part. So 40%. If you don't, you know, if you got two sentences, then no matter how great your picture is, it probably is not going to get very far. Preferably don't wait till the last minute. I haven't looked at the database yet this week or whatever, even starting last week. So many things that come in at the end. I won't have to be putting them together this time, but they'll have to be put together in Maryland and then sent to me so we can do the final judging. So the, the sooner the better. There's another balloon that's gotten a lot easier to do i remember in 2006 we were using a really expensive high speed camera and we're so excited when our balloon burst and the water was still suspended but i think this one that says 2015 see it was not that difficult to do with digital cameras in your phone even sometimes it's being in the right place at the right time so being where you can take pictures of a volcano, um, we do get entries from other countries, a lot from um, China. They have a maximum number that they enter. Um, AAPT kind of handles that and then sends the, the photographs to us, but we decided we couldn't just say all China can enter because there's just too many of them. So they have a, I'm sure not, can't remember right now, a maximum number and they select them over there and then send them to AAPT. But like this one, they need to tell us how they took the picture. So you really, when, <clears throat> when our students are um, submitting these pictures, they really are competing um, internationally. Oh, yes. How many other countries would you say are represented in the um, 12, 15 usually a year. Sometimes it's different ones. I do have the people that will email me from Taiwan saying it's in the mail and it has to get here. And another thing, your students, some students spend too far too much money getting their photograph, it was to me, or to now it'll be to AAPT. Um, I'm not sure how much a, I mailed something last week, a tracking letter from the post office. So they're good about that now. And when you're entered into the database, the student and the teacher both receive a confirmation that it's been received. So um, when we go, when we as teachers go about submitting our students' um, pictures, we have to both do it online and send in the mail? Yes. You upload it, and there's a, you know, a deadline for that. The deadline for it has to be postmarked by the 15th of May, 
and then it's accepted. Sometimes you feel like it's taking forever to get to us, but that's why we, you know, please try to get it in maybe about the 10th of May instead of waiting until the 15th. But no, there's an uploaded one because that's in the digital copy that AAPT has to use, as well as we need a eight and a half by 10 or eight by 10 photograph on good quality photographic paper, not just on copy paper from the copy machine. And um, that can, you know, not get you too far either. Um, let's see, I've got a copy of what, like I said, my rubric is far from, from ready, but looking at the photo quality, the physics essay about the photo, the originality, so something that's really new and different, and then the artistic qualities of looking at the photograph. So a lot of people decide on the top 100, so it's not just one or two folks. So, you know, some pictures go in and out and let's get my favorite in or no, this one's got something that I think is not working. So it's a group that does it and then a group of physicists that select them at the summer meeting this summer in Washington, D.C. in July. It looks like um, we have somebody raising their digital hand. So um, I'm going to allow Alan to talk and to Alan, if you have a question, um, we should be able to hear you now so you can ask it. Alan? Okay, maybe that was a uh a mistake. Um, so everybody's questions answered about the contest. Nobody's got any more questions. This one's neat. You should read about this one. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I think that was a winner last year. Yeah, I like this one too. Okay, I think we'll probably um, wait another couple seconds to see if there are any questions uh, from the audience. Feel free to enter them in the chat box if you have them. Okay, uh, Tommy, is there anything in closing that you'd like to say? Just um, how much fun I think the contest is, even if your kids don't enter, that they see the physics that's all around them. Um, maybe you could give, some, give them some pictures without the essay and get them to tr try to figure out the physics that's in there. That could be a, a fun over the weekend kind of assignment or something like that. Um, any suggestions? Like I said, there's a couple of AAPT rubrics that if you search AAPT photo contest or AAPT on irubric.com, there's some that are posted up there. I can't figure out how to get mine posted. But um, as far as teachers using them in their classroom, um, I'd be glad to you know answer anybody's questions. I told Justine I wasn't gonna sit here and talk the whole time. And fortunately, I did have this wonderful PowerPoint, so you got to see some of the 
the other pictures and things. So I hope you found out what you needed to find out. And please have some students enter. Looking forward to seeing their photos. Awesome. Um, I just added in that link to the I rubric for uh, so that you can check out the different rubrics that other yeah, I think you have to join to search but that's no big deal so good thank you awesome okay well thank you so much Tommy for sharing with us um, thank you and thank you everybody for coming uh, please be be on the lookout for there will be another um, webinar later this month uh, about policy um, policy and teaching and physics and how uh, how teachers are involved and can be better involved in influ and influence um, the policies whether that's at your district level or um, at an even broader level uh, look forward to seeing you guys at another webinar have a great night thank you